morning so we all and the entire Snow Hall executive team. We're so happy to be here today to tell you about our recommendation for this fantastic opportunity that's all on your plate right now. This is Brian, this is Sean, and I'm Sarah, and we're going to be going over some stuff with you today to give you a recommendation going into the future to help grow your business. So what we're going to go over with you is we're going to talk about where we are right now operations of your organization, where we think you guys should go for the greatest success possible for you, and how you're going to get there, and that's what we're going to talk about. So we're going to identify some issues for you, give you some analysis and strategic recommendation, and implementation plan, and finally conclude. First of all, we made some assumptions. For the long run, or sorry, the lease company that is on your, um, that has proposed a lease uh, contract with you, we assumed that the dump site as well as the leasing of the trucks was a package deal and not an alternative separately. The next assumption that we made is that we're going to be using straight line amortization. Third, we assumed that there would be no truck salvage value after the six years of the proposed project but that it would have a useful life for up to eight years as stated from your information that you gave us. We're also assuming that 100 trucks are needed. That's based off of the current city data that we have, but we'd like to reassess this every two years of the proposed city project at hand, just to make sure that we're meeting the current demand um, once the project has gone going. Lastly, we're going to also make the assumption that the calculations we're making don't count the periodic sales of um, used equipment that you mentioned. We have not taken those into consideration in our calculations today. So the other thing that we consider is a certain number of stakeholders. So Sophie and Paul James, um, the competitors that have put in the city bid of $35 per residence, uh, the current residential and commercial clients that you currently hold in your organization, uh, the city mayor and hiring body with the city of Calgary for this potential project, the new residences and businesses that you're going to be taking on, uh, which was about 250,000 residences, a huge undertaking, and finally, the current and future employees of your organization. So next, Ryan's going to talk about our call and All right, so we've had a chance to uh, sit down with you and uh, talk to you about what Snowman's and what it is all about, what you're, where you've been in the past, where you've grown from, where you're at right now, the current operations that you have, and where you want to see going into the future. Snowman Limited has had tremendous success growing up from just a two-person operation, simply shoveling driveways to moving up to down, dealing with over 2,500 uh, residential clients. And that's tremendous growth on your part and the hard work that you've put in. And, uh, and you know this opportunity that has come up. You're really passionate about this government contract that's now available. We've had a chance to look over your numbers and your operations, and we're really uh, excited about this opportunity for you as well. We want to help you achieve this goal and go to the future and be successful in your bid. And so we feel in line with you that we, we want to be bidding on this government contract, but the main question that we I want to answer and provide to you is what amount that this should bid to both be successful in winning the contract and uh, providing growth and uh, benefits to your company both now and in the future. And so that's what the main thing we're going to be tackling in our presentation. But in order to come to this answer, we've had to look at a number of sub-issues that have come up and that we want to address for you in the ways the future. And uh, they all fall under the category of looking at your operational strategy and what you want to do to be uh, uh, competitive, both with your customers and uh, with the government and being uh, efficient operations. And so we looked at both your primary and your support activities. Your primary being the activities that provide your service to your customers and get the snow removed and on time and when needed. And the support activities are those that are uh, helpful in ensuring your success in doing this in a timely manner and being competitive, giving you an advantage over your competitors. And you've had tremendous success so far and you continue using these activities in the future. Uh, two of the primary activities that we're really focusing on is the choice uh, of looking at your operations on the 
trucks that you have for the snow removal and the choice of whether to buy or to lease these trucks. What's beneficial for you both financially and non-financially. Additionally, we're looking we want to look at the tracking system that you have for determining that the places that need snow removed are done. Currently, you use a manual system, but there are opportunities in the future to expand to uh, higher tech ones that are uh, more advanced and provide benefits. And so we're going to look at those and see the benefits and the costs of each of those. And the two support activities that we're looking at are um, looking at significant accounting issues that you might uh, want us to address that you've had some sort of questions in the past and what's going to happen in the future, as well as looking at the stakeholders. Sarah has already mentioned a number of the stakeholders that we've looked at, and we want to keep that constant throughout this presentation and analysis of the opportunities. And so next I'm going to pass it off to Sean to talk about um, some of the first analysis. So we'll start off by uh, analyzing the operational strategy. We have a look at uh, fit with uh, your customers and it uh, focus on the timeliness of service, you focus on how quickly you can get the service done to your customers. The city is taking an extraordinary amount of time and 50% of all complaints in the city are to do with the timeliness of the snow removal. So you're, you're competing perfectly in, uh, in the market. But you have an opportunity to work with uh, the city and help bring your competitive strategy to them. And there's a couple of ways uh, we can do this. And first is to go to the status quo, which is uh, not using a, um, uh, an automated system. That still allows for you to keep your costs down and uh, be timely. But there's also an opportunity to go uh, towards a very high-tech GPS, real-time system, which will increase your uh, which will increase your uh, even further. However, there's a large cost component to this. So it would move you away from there's also an opportunity to go for a lower cost, but still adequate uh, um, system using Google Earth. It's much less expensive, it's still timely, and will allow you to cost a little bit more cost. So now we'll talk about uh, minor systems. Sarah? Integrated technology. 
technology is incorporated is the highest ranked tracking system in the world. Same as before with the virus as least option, what I've done is sum up the costs over the six years. So the startup cost and the yearly cost all summarized for an all in six year cost for both of these options. As you can see, there's about a two and a half to three times difference in the price, the handheld specialist limited one being the more cost effective. Um, qualitatively, when I compared the two, um, there was a difference in the implementation time. So as you can see, six months for the less technologically advanced version versus 10 months for the highly advanced version. Also, as you can see, there's no minimum contract for the, for the um, HSL option, whereas with the five rock, or sorry, with the ICI option, there is a minimum of a five year contract. Now, we found that as a risk because um, the city after two years can choose to terminate this project. If we choose to undertake the more expensive option, and then the project gets terminated after two years, that's a huge liability to us that we take into consideration. So, as I said, the other option can be cancelled if the city contract is terminated. Um, whereas both options do need customer demand for this up to date information, the uh, integrated technology is being incorporated more so. So, what we feel this will do for the customer stakeholders of Calgary is this is going to give them up to date information about where and when. Um, roads are clear. And uh, one of the complaints that was mentioned was that people can't get to work. This is a huge barrier to people. Some people were saying that other communities were getting plowed and then about five, six days later they were seeing their cities plowed, their communities plowed because they were less wealthy communities. This is a huge barrier to these people in Calgary because they cannot get to work. So both of these options keep people informed and people significantly reduce the complaints that are coming into the city of Calgary. So next time, I'm going to talk about some of issues. So in your questions to us uh, that you presented, there are a number of uh, you proposed for some guidance on some of the accounting issues that may come up, uh, both in what has happened in the past and what this government contract could mean to you. So looking first at the current issues of uh, what happened in your past year, uh, we noticed some revenue recognition problems. Uh, there was a customer who had paid for both 2010 and 2011 or, and the fall, or this year and the following year, and because the cash was received, your accountant had entered it in right as revenue, um, whereas this really should have been accrued for the following year because the service hadn't been provided yet. Uh, the second one we've looked at are some capitalization issues. There was a significant renovation to the office done in the prior year, and uh, this uh, established a longer life for the office and significantly improved use and so rather than expensing this amount it should have been capitalized and appreciated over its lifetime. And the final issue that we looked at is this uh, tax refund. Uh, you, were, had, you had received a refund of around $23,000 and just included it in other income uh, and this should really be addressed differently. Uh, looking at the future, uh, some things that need to be looked at is if you pursue the lease of this truck, this, or the trucks that we had recommended, uh, the accounting for these leases. Sometimes the leases can be uh, either reported as an operating lease or a capital lease, depending on the specific nature of the agreement. Um, we feel, looking at the economic useful life as well as the net present value of the lease, that it will be uh, appropriate to list as a capital lease. However, specific uh, agreement may change this somewhat. Um, another issue you uh, looked at is the small business deduction. You're currently receiving a lower tax rate of 21%, and this is due to uh, your classification likely as a Canadian controlled private company and a lower amount of active business income. Uh, if you pursue this government contract, uh, your income is likely going to rise as well as the amount of capital you have, and this will likely change the designation and uh, likely cause a larger tax rate. And uh, finally, just with the government contract, is it's going to be uh, guaranteed income over the, uh, for the contract, and this will affect the way that we report the revenue. And uh, for the next bit of analysis that we have, we look, come to looking at uh, and I, getting an idea of what we could charge per resident for the cost. So here we have a graph that looks at uh, the current government costs, our competitor costs, and our projection of what could be possible for our minimum bid. Uh, 
So in the top line, you can see the government cost of $41, uh, the competitor cost $35, and then our projection, the green one, over the life of the contract uh, would be steadily decreasing. And so this gives us an idea that we could be more uh, effective in our uh, competitors. So I'm going to pass it off to Sean and talk about our alternatives. Okay, so we've got some alternatives for uh, going forward with company. So the first one we can talk about is the status quo, right? We're not putting in a bid. Uh, that's something you might identify that you don't want to do. We can still like to have a look at it, uh, just to create a baseline for the other alternatives. Uh, there's also, based on the costs that Ryan identified, we could uh, fall well beneath the 35 so there is some leeway in what we can get. So we can take a little bit and be a bigger, uh, like an outperformer bid, slightly cut the bid, or go our way under the uh, scale of the contract. So the status quo, um, it's not going to uh, provide as much financial opportunity for uh, your business. It's also not going to foster your growth. Uh, but it is wonderful. You already have a market, you're very good at it, and you'll continue. Uh, there's not a lot of room for growth. Uh, the city comes to a standstill. Hard on stakeholders and community in terms of productivity. Uh, next, we have a low bid. So it would come in, we could bid at around $25. It would be a loss initially, but our costs come down over time and eventually make money. So this uh, we are now the strategy we should look at, but there is some financial implications initially. But it does provide the growth, it will win the contract because it comes in under the competitor's bid, and it will help get the city to be a little bit three years ago within, uh, within less than five days, less than 24 hours, and 40 years seconds. With the medium bid, uh, it comes under, just under the media competitors bid, but uh, it also comes above our costs. So it's very financially viable, it allows for the company to grow. Uh, it's also winnable in terms of it comes in the competitors bid, and uh, it will also make the city run smoothly by getting that money to and from work, and your business uh, plan as well too. However, with a high bid, it would be if you could provide more value. Uh, you could implement the uh, exp more expensive system in this case, but there's a potential we won't win the bid. The city is online, but they don't necessarily look for the cheapest bid, but we don't know this for sure. That might cost uh, the contract. So based on this criteria, we've identified that a medium bid is the best place to, uh, to approach this market from. So we're really excited to uh, say we should be going forward and going to medium bid and winning this contract and taking efficient business you develop and growing it and investing in making it more efficient through uh, this uh, Google cycle system. So in order to move forward with this, the next thing we're going to have to do is submit the bid. Now that we've decided what we'd like to do, we can uh, put that bid in as soon as possible until we know the results of the bid. Uh, we'll have to wait on the next actions of uh, investing in these uh, technologies. Once we find the bid, it's time to invest in uh, the HSL once that happens, we can begin to hire more employees because the business is going to start going at that point. We need to hire them. We need to start uh, addressing the urgent complaints that the city hall is getting. Because the city hall is going to be uh, taking the complaints, but it would be up to snowman to address the complaints. So we need to find out the urgent complaints immediately. And then on the way at that point, we need to address the new complaints. And that's going to be a long-term thing, and that's uh, a service we can provide to the city. Once the HSL allows us to use it, it's time to train staff on how to use it, and uh, we'll need to continue doing that as staff change. It's a large organization, so we want to do some change over. And we're going to have to reassess. Coming up to that two year point, we're going to have to reassess and see what the situation is and decide if we should continue with the path or make a change. So, with that said, I'd like to pass it off to Sarah, who's going to talk about some nice Thank you. So, um, the biggest risk is that. We may fail and lose the bid after two years. Um, we do feel that with the new automated system, faster tracking, and underneath the bid of the competitor, that we are efficient enough to go forward successfully. We also are concerned about losing our current customers, but with that in mind, we feel that they would be incorporated into the new city bid. Lastly, we are worried about losing time efficiency, but we also feel again with the automated system that that will be inaccounted for also. So this is what we told you today. Thank you very much for your time and we now open your questions. I was just kind of uh, wriggling toward that if uh, 
Do you think there's been the consideration of the $400,000 grant um, if we, you know, we can't sit and I include your time limits and that? Uh, how are we going to deal with that path for one day? Uh, sorry, can I ask for clarification? Um, it's saying the city will provide a $400,000 grant to successful bidders. Right, and that was to be used towards capital purchases. And um, we've addressed that in order to meet the needs of the city, we're going to have to be pursuing uh, more trucks to be plowed. And we've uh, identified that the lease option would be the most ideal for Snowman Limited. And we could use the grant to help fund uh, the initial upfront costs of those leases. And as well, we could uh, uh, advise taking out a loan to help cover that upfront cost and uh, address the other cash flow needs that we have. And then through the future, through successful operations, we'd be able to find the further lease payments that we have in the future. So, um, when you were doing your lease business by analysis, what other costs, other than actual lease and buy costs, did you include in your analysis? Uh, well, we first looked, uh, as Sarah had mentioned, uh, the wages that may be uh, that may be paid for the longer drive to uh, the purchase cost. Um, we also looked at the remediation costs that we would be saving. Um, we said if we had purchased, we need to fund those ourselves, whereas if we lease, we're automatically going to be getting, receiving the landfill site for them. Uh, we also considered uh, the, uh, the cost of land, people to supervise the landfill operations. The government, uh, Cal City of Calgary, currently provided a number of the cost of that. And we Consider that in our ideas of what we, we may have to pay if we chose to purchase the trucks as opposed to this. One of the, um, the, the over, to me, the overpowering risk of this thing is, is the two year window and your recommendation on the lease option, which carries the lease for six years. Um, I, I think it potentially has the it has the potential to uh, bring the organization probably to its knees. Can you, can, you, can you talk about that a little bit in terms of your recommendation? Um, yes, we did analyze that. And when I was making the, um, the overall six-year cost, I was actually shocked to find that the largest costs in there were actually the gasoline and the yearly costs. Um, so there was the, the annual maintenance cost that we're paying to the leasing organization, as well as the startup cost of about $800,000. Um, but beyond that, the costs were actually astounding still for the gasoline costs. So even if we did lose the bid, a, a large portion of the costs in the lease option would be dropped off because if we lost the bid after two years, then those gasoline costs would be saved if we weren't doing this or this operation that we um, would bring the bid to the city. Um, what are the risks you identified as the risk of losing the contract after two years of construction? Um, is there any way that I'm going to use this risk, risk so I'm sure that I secure the four year extension? Yeah, in our, um, in our timeline, we, uh, we outlined a reassessment period. So, what we want to do is we want to implement, implement the new automated system, train up the new staff once we hire them, and then we want to reassess. And what we really want to do is work with the city and still be getting constant feedback from them as, as per complaints and if they are in fact reducing as fast as we really believe that they will. And in doing that, we can redo our processes. We're hoping to do that after the first year so that we, we have a really good idea of whether or not we're on track by the time the end of the second year happens. And we really do feel that in working with them, we will reduce customer complaints fast, especially because we're already so efficient with the by 10 a.m. and the new automated system. So, so just to clarify for that, I, I think you're making the assumption that we should use customer complaints as a non-financial measure with the city. Is that, is that it, was our main, it was our main non-financial measure, yes. So you were saying um, uh, with the decision criteria, that if we keep things with the status quo, that won't necessarily help our financial situation. But I'm kind of disagreeing with my brother a bit. I think Thank you. 
why are you so convinced that this is the right thing to do? Thank you, that concludes question and answer time. <laughs>